Hi, I hope that you're doing well. Uh, since we are discussing World of Warcraft today, specifically the Burning Crusade, I thought why better to film than at my own gaming station, uh, in my chair, near my computer, with my WoW posters up on the wall. Uh, so yeah, let's get into it. Um, so today we're discussing the Burning Crusade, which was the first expansion pack um, of the World of Warcraft gaming franchise on the computer. Um, it came out on January 16th of 2007. I was a junior in high school. Um, and this expansion was really historic and monumental at the time because it sold almost two and a half million copies the very first day that it was released, which was the largest um, PC gaming release ever at the time. Um, and it was by a wide margin as well. Um, and so that was one of the first things I think that got people's attention and led to things like the South Park episode of World of Warcraft and um, just more general popularity, I think. Although I will say as a player, um, since the beginning, it really wasn't until maybe Miss the Pandaria Cataclysm that it seemed like more people really knew what I was even referring to if I mentioned World of Warcraft. Um, so this was the uh, case. This was my one of the 2.4 million sold that the Burning Crusade came in. Um, although today you can download the whole game straight to your computer, you used to have to buy a CD and install it. Um, and the cover of this is very telling. It has a little embossed Janai over here and a blood elf here. And these were the two new races that were released with this expansion pack. So um, previously blood elves did not exist in the game as a playable race, nor did the Draenei. The Draenei were added to the Alliance faction, and the Blood Elves were added to the Horde faction, and this was also very special for players because uh, Draenei were the first Alliance class who could be shaman. Um, previously, it was only the orcs, the trolls, and the tauren, which are all horde races, who could be a shaman. So now this brought capability for alliance players to try out being a shaman. And similarly, blood elves became the first horde class um, to be paladins. At first, um, they were only humans or dwarves, which, according to the lore, makes a lot of sense. Um, but I definitely wasn't against this. Um, I actually became a Draenei shaman and enjoyed it quite a lot. Uh, I still am a shaman, but I faction hop often. Um, back in the beginning, um, there was no such thing as transferring your character, whether that's from Horde to Alliance, Alliance to Horde, from one server to another server, that was not an option. So people tended to be very um, 
loyal to their faction. People who were on the Alliance um, tended to see themselves as the good guys and the Horde as the bad guys. And people who were on the Horde were very proud to be Horde and kind of saw the Alliance as like pansies. And there was like a huge feud between them, which led to a lot of the t-shirts in my closet, including um, friends don't let friends play Alliance and uh, have a few that are Alliance based and a few that are Horde based. Um, personally, I started Alliance as a gnome rogue, but when the Burning Crusade came out, um, having that Janai Shaman option, I actually didn't make my Janai Shaman until Wrath of the Lich King, um, which was the expansion following the Burning Crusade. Uh, but, so that we can see here, we have the male and female um, Blood Elf Paladin in full gear, so they have the very Paladin-esque look with the shoulders and wrist guards especially. Um, it has that very valiant look and it still sort of fits into the um, Quel'Thalos uh, Silvermoon City type vibe. Um, which I think was really cool and I feel like they did a really good job of incorporating these looks um, to still match the game and not look like it didn't belong even though in terms of the lore it didn't belong. Um, and down here I have a picture that is actually my Janai Shaman. is in Wrath of the Lich King, because as I said, I didn't make mine until then, but here are the um, examples of what these new playable classes and races looked like. So that was definitely a cool, cool thing that people were excited about, or angry about. Um, so, in the Burning Crusade, the overarching storyline includes uh, a powerful army called the Burning Legion. The Burning Legion is endless. Um, whenever the bodies form souls of the Legion would be slain, they would essentially reincarnate in this other sphere of the world, a whole nother planet and realm. Um, so they technically could never die. You could never really beat the Burning Crusade. Um, and the leaders of the Burning Crusade were mainly uh, Draenei. So there was a group of four Draenei, um, Archimon, Kil'jaeden, Velen, it'll come to me, um, and they were like best friends, um, they were all very positive and good and happy people and they led their kind with grace and compassion um, and they were very wise and they had these like stones that they were attuned to that would give them certain visions and stuff. It was all very kosher and they were having a good time. Um, however, and I should mention that they came from a different world altogether. Not even the Outland was their first home. Um, Janai actually means exiled, and the good Janai that we see 
on the Alliance. Um, that's the reason why they're so-called Jernai, is because they've been exiled from their homeland, which was not the Outlands. Um, essentially, other evil members of the Burning Legion um, coerced and used bad magic to invite Archimond and kill Jaden in, and whoever I can't remember into the Burning Legion's ranks, offering them all this power and honor and glory. And Velen was the only one who was like, I don't know about this. Um, so he ended up actually saving as many people as he could from the Burning Legion and their ship crashed in on Outland. Um, so, meanwhile, in Outland, well, this isn't really meanwhile, the Janai come to the Outlands and start kind of making it home because what else can they do? They have successfully evaded the Burning Legion um, and meanwhile, this is really meanwhile, Archimonde and Kil'jaeden and all of the Jernai who stayed become members of the Burning Legion. So they look different. Um, they kind of become evil. Um, they just want power and they're not really like true Jernai anymore. They're not in look, in emotion, and spirit, they're different. They belong to the Burning Legion now. Um, so they're back there doing their thing. Um, Velen takes a bunch of them and crashes into the Outland where they start making their new home because they can't go back to their home planet, um, which is Draenor, um, or else they'll run back into the Burning Legion. So, the whole point of the Burning Legion comes from a guy named Sargeras, who essentially wants to dominate and kill every world that exists, and there are a lot in the whole world of Warcraft, uh, the universe. So, they're still going to be hunting Velen and the Trenai for years and years and years and years to come. Velen does everything he can to hide and conceal them in their new land. And they live peacefully alongside um, the Maghar orcs. So, this is a map of the Outland. I've got Hellfire Peninsula, Taraka Forest, Shadow Moon Valley, Nether Storm is these floating pieces, Blades Edge Mountain, and Zangramarsh. So over here in Zangramarsh is mainly where the Janai are. And over here in Hellfire Peninsula, which shares this border with Sangramarsh, is where the Magkar Orcs are. And they respect one another, they respect one another's traditions, and they don't bother each other. Um, they just live in harmony, they're aware of one another, but they're not actively engaging with one another. Um, eventually, the Burning Legion catches up and finds Velen and the Trenai, and instead of just attacking them outright, they become very manipulative, and they embed their foul magic and power-hungry feelings and thoughts into the orcs who then turn on the Janai. Um, so they essentially start a war 
intentionally and they just ruin the orc colony that was there. Um, the orcs are very primitive in comparison to the Janai. The Janai have a lot of cool technology that is otherworldly. Um, the orcs are not stupid, but they're simple. They live a simple life. They hunt, they eat, they have their stuff that they do, and that's that. Um, so it wasn't difficult to corrupt them because they were kind of gullible, I guess. Um, so yeah, Sargeras and Archimond and Kill Jaden. Maybe Sargeras is who I was trying to think of. Um, they infiltrate the orcs deceptively and sneakily. They cause fighting between the orcs. They cause fighting between the orcs and the Trenai. Uh, it's just a bloodbath. Things are going terribly. Um, just a really bad time. And the orcs are also dealing with like desecration of their own kind. They're turning into these foul green beings when they used to only be like tan and brown, those kind of colors. Um, but they've been tainted with foul magic, which is the Burning Legion's magic. So, meanwhile, meanwhile, um, back on Azeroth, which is where all of the first World of Warcraft takes place, um, the Eastern Kingdoms and Kalimdor, a lot of stuff happens, and eventually this portal is opened, the dark portal, which, um, allows passage between Outland and Azeroth, even though they're two completely different worlds. So that's how the heroes of Azeroth get to Outland. And they're like, what the heck is going on? Um, there's a huge... There's a lot of trouble especially because the orcs don't even realize that they're being duped and it's really sad and difficult. Um, in this book, there's a story called The Last Guardian. Grub, and uh, it is essentially the story of the crossing over between Azeroth and the Burning Crusade, the stuff with Medivh and Lothar and all of the higher-ups in Stormwind, and all of the stuff that's happening um, with the horde. It's just, it's a lot of information and they actually tried to condense all of that down into the World of Warcraft movie that came out a number of years ago. Um, and I think they did a fairly good job for what they had to work with time-wise, but if you're into reading, I highly suggest reading uh, The Last Guardian because it is so much more complicated than what the movie would lead you to believe, which is usually what happens with adaptations from books to movies, but it's really, really good, and it explains essentially the Burning Crusade as a whole. Um, so in terms of actual playability, though not just the lore, 
um, there were a few new other new things that came along with the Burning Crusade other than access to the Outlands and the new zones, um, the new races, pallies and shamans being cross-faction playable. Um, there were also a lot more happening with PvP, so they introduced the ranked ladder system that we have still today with 2v2, 3v3, and 5v5 arenas. And this is when that started really becoming big. Um, there are still annual, and I think they're every quarter, um, competitions where the best arena players do get out. They're pretty, they're pretty fun to watch, but they're super fast paced, so it's kind of hard actually um, to follow along all of the time unless you're really unless you know a lot about the game, I guess I should say. Um, so, arenas came into play. They also added the Eye of the Storm as a new battleground, um, which was cool. As far as arena maps go, they added um, Ruins of Lordaeron, which is in the Undercity. They added um, the Circle of Blood, which is in Blades Edge Mountains, and they added the Ring of Trials, which is in Nagrand. Um, so those were three arena maps that were brand new, uh, that people were really starting to enjoy um, and like playing on. And this was a really big shift because previously PvP was mainly just in the world. Um, if you if you played on a PvP server, that meant that at any point in time, um, if you ran into someone from the opposite faction, you guys could fight to the death. Um, and there were a lot of incredibly talented players out there. My favorite was a rogue named Buddhist. He was like my, you know, muse. Um, I was nowhere near as good as he was, but I used to love watching his montages of killing people, um, gank ganking people, I guess I should say. And although arenas and battlegrounds were picking up more, Blizzard still did include, um, I guess I should say world PvP as well. There were, I think, three areas. Um, in Hellfire, you could do the fortifications. In the Grand, there was a uh, Hala, which was like King of the Hill kind of style. And then in Taraka Forest, it was kind of similar. Um, so in those three areas, there were intentional PvP zones with objectives. Uh, you can only do certain things if your faction was in control of the zone. Uh, there would be certain times throughout the day that that would kind of like be initiated, like, okay, the battle at Hala is about to begin, and you could, anyone could go over there and fight, um, and that was pretty fun as well, although it did kind of seem like people more enjoyed random world PvP, not as much the intentional, so intentional world PvP. Um, I feel like in later expansions, Blizzard kind of reverted to keeping that sequestered a bit. Um, they did have Winter Grasp in Wrath of Lich King, which you walked into to join. But even that now is a queuable thing, like a battleground. It's like an epic battleground, I think they call it. Um, so yeah. I guess that's the majority of it. 
Um, also, how could I not mention Illidan? Uh, Illidan... Where to even start? <laughs> Illidan and Malfurion are brothers. They're twins. And they had a very interesting dynamic. A lot of um, things in their culture when they were born that were pointing to them having these destinies. Um, and they kind of had an issue because there was a girl elf. I call her Tyrand. The game calls her Tyrande. Um, and she ended up with Malfurion, but Illidan liked her, so it was kind of like a, you know, brother rivalry um, type situation. And Illidan eventually kind of cast himself out of his own kind, which were the High Elves. Um, the High Elves were a long time ago. <laughs> and this was all a long time ago as well. Like, the whole situation that started with the Nar, um, the Draenei and the Burning Legion and all that. This is all thousands and thousands of years ago. Um, but the High Elves are even older than that. They were one of the first sort of beings a long time ago. And from them, we now have the Night Elves and the Blood Elves. But the High Elves are like the OG Elves, and Tyrande, Malfurion, and Illidan were all from this group of people. Um, and yeah, Illidan kind of just chose a bad path eventually and became corrupt. A member of the Burning Legion, he He was actually first, he, I think he first claimed the Outlands like as his own, but there's a separate book called Illidan, which essentially just explains the Black Temple raid, but it also kind of introduces the idea of demon hunters, which Illidan is kind of the first demon hunter um, character that, that we are introduced to. Um, and actually this is him here this guy has horns and everything and you can kind of see in his body how he was um, an elf previously but has been corrupted over time and by his own decisions um, that's also a very tangled and interesting story, so another great book if you haven't read it. Um, but yeah, uh, Illidan conquered the Outlands and so he was kind of like the head person in charge there. Um, and so that caused a lot more in like the PvE scene, raiding, Black Temple, and all of that uh, was also very interesting. In terms of the zones, I think Nether Storm is probably my favorite just because it's very, well, it's very purple, which I love, but there's also like a lot of magic and just cool stuff happening. The sky looks cool. Um, I like the dungeons and the raids and everything that were out there. I also really liked. Sangamarsh. That's more my aesthetic, I guess, is the kind of warm, magic-y, pretty zones. I was not as big of a fan of Hellfire or Blades Edge Mountain because they were, even Shadow Moon Valley, they were all kind of just more barren and bleh. <laughs> they looked like a desert or just not very pleasant. So, uh, yeah, I think that if I was to play Classic Burning Crusade, which is coming out pretty soon, I think it's in beta at the moment, 
Um, I think that would be what I would be looking forward to most, is making a Janai Shaman to relive that glory and questing in Netherstorm and Zinger Marsh. So, I hope that you enjoyed this little blast to the past with the Burning Crusade and uh, yeah, look to our Ogar.